Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, May 29, 2022. We have Howard Linsen as usual and also Shiv uh, Sh Sh Sharma, who is one yeah. of the guys running Stock Tweets, uh, based in Singapore. Yeah, should I introduce yourself? It's, it's great to have sure. you. Sure. Hey, guys. So been a long time watcher. I've been have, have actually watched your show for almost three, four years now. Um, regularly. Sure. Learned a ton from both uh, you guys. And so really appreciate what you do. Um, have been an investor for a long time. Started off in New York, the whole investment banking, private equity thing. Worked in both public equities as well as uh, private at, on Cisco's um, venture and corp dev team where I met Howard. And then was it with AWS for a while in Singapore. Now I run Stock Twits India. So here we are. We may, we'll, talk, we'll touch on India. Like what, uh, I mean, go through the markets and we'll touch on Singapore and India. Yeah, I mean, last week, we, especially after the, the Fed minutes were released, we kind of saw a, a pretty substantial widespread bounce. Yeah. Uh, probably a better market rally, but you know, we're not gonna judge, judge it too early. Um, as last time we had like a, that huge bear market rally here in, um, in March, this, we have the same situation, energy is leading. So a lot of um, natural gas is a 12 year high, uh, crude oil is near uh, 10 year high. So uh, a lot of energy oil gas stocks went up about 20% last week. So pretty substantial move in the entire sector. And um, basically other alternative energy sources like solar are also, trying to bounce. Lithium was a huge, huge winner. Huge. huge. Also big moves in um, Levant or Livant, I don't know how to pronounce that. And also ALB and LAC, like anything in that space. Yeah, S huge SQM. SQM. SQM, which is like the one from Chile. They bought a fertilizer and also lithium. Uh, All-time highs, huge move uh, in the past few weeks. And I mean, they're, they're not that many really uh, price momentum stocks right now and all the growth investors, all the momentum traders are basically watching a, a small number of stocks and maybe this is why we see these moves in uh, energy and lithium. There are not that many of them on the, on the 52 week high list and everyone is basically piling, piling uh, in on those and we're seeing those big moves. You know, you see the, the second the pressure from the general market was removed and then we're seeing those stocks that were kind of building bases uh, breaking out on pretty uh, significant volume. So these are kind of the new, uh, the new old leaders in a way. Uh, what are you seeing, Howard? Um, well, I got so much to talk about, but yeah, it's, it's really been a tale of, as we see, it. it's nice to get this bounce. It's not, sh you know, I don't follow a lot of people, so you know, it's guilty until proven innocent on if this is a bear market, but sentiment was pretty bad, like including myself, like sentiment, even though I was buying sentiment was bad. And that helped, um, you know, the panic wasn't there, but again, like it's such a tough read on panic because the super rich were getting hurt. Like the young rich were getting hurt and the super rich. Really? And oh. it, and the energy people are quietly gobbling up billions of dollars while politicians fight with billionaires. Like Biden's fighting with Bezos online. Elon's fighting with everybody. And Exxon's quietly printing all-time highs while they continue to scorch here. So it's a beautiful, weird... Almost there, yeah awful yeah but with dividends this things like a, the home run yeah obviously yes. and if we and if yeah. we squeeze back on on exxon on the weekly forgetting march 20 when it went negative and i bought some just because it was like cool i you know and i flipped it there's you know i that look at the retest in december of 20 so you know these are lessons for however the tech you are not going to have a v bottom so, so forget about it. You, if you really want to do work, now's the time to start doing work on growth stocks uh, because you're going to have, even if they bought them, there's going to be all kinds of retests here and missed numbers. I mean, you worked at Cisco, you worked in Cisco and Amazon. Give us some feedback. Like they cut to their human, like they make mistakes too, or they panic at the, they start cutting people right now. And then, or, you know, everybody's, 
business is disrupted. Snapchat guided it down, yeah. yeah. So one thing that happened, uh, uh, like back in 09, uh, I've actually tweeted this out from Meritech Capital pretty recently, right? Is when, you know, now multiples look better, right? But like Salesforce back then went from like, six, seven times revenue forward to like one and a half times because estimates but then kept getting cut. So we haven't really seen that yet. And so if I right. you've had the, the you've had the price, the P so the price and the, the PE net. ratio has come down, but we don't know what the earnings will look like. That's my exactly right. So back then Salesforce was growing 50%. Then in, like at the bottom it was then growing 20%. So it may have looked cheap, but the estimates kept going down and down and down and down as IT budgets got cut. So we haven't seen that impact really in enterprise software yet. Now, Snowflake mentioned it a little bit because it's more consumption revenue, which is why their stock was down last week. But generally, you haven't seen that in enterprise IT, which is a lot stickier than consumer and ads and those kind of things. I mean, because of the run in, in Salesforce, it just looks like a blip. Right, I haven't whipped the Yeah, picture, yeah, but, absolutely, yeah. I mean, but, um, almost yeah, anything but, went down 60 to 70%, anything in Including tech. Apple, right? Like, Apple so, and Amazon, yes. Yeah. So so the difference right now is if we pull up the banks, like, like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, they could, they could not be healthier, right? Um, and I'll, let's just say Goldman, because they're like a mix of venture, private equity, and trade. So they love vol. Like think about what was going on. They had to be saved in a way by Warren Buffett. They are not even close. They are licking their chops right now. And then if we go to JP Morgan, okay, this is not a way. So this is different. This is a tech and, and, and interest rate, you know, ratcheted expectation. This is really affecting the private markets and you know, people will hide this stuff for a decade if they can. So in the public markets, it's been painful, right? Um, but it's really painful right now for the people that have not had a look at their 60-40 portfolio for 20 years because it's it just worked. And now they open their statements the last few months and they're seeing truly down 20-25% in their long-term portfolio that was a 60-40 portfolio. There's been no shelter. Because, and then um, I'm going to share my screen because I think the most important thing about how mispositioned everybody is. I'm going to show. Can you? Can Are you, you sharing? Uh, yeah. Can you provision me? Yeah. Am I allowed to share? You are. You're sharing right now. <laughs> what are you seeing? You see, Zoom. You, okay. Now we're seeing my, Koifin. Koifin, yes. Koifin. All right. Yeah. So let, let's just take a look at really what's going on here. And this is a great. Everybody who doesn't use Coifin, yeah, I'm biased. And, uh, I don't know if any, if you use Ivan, you don't really care about fundamentals, so you don't use this. Shiv, do you use this at all? I do use it quite a bit, okay. actually. Yeah. So here's a couple tricks that Rob showed. I mean, not tricks, because this is idiots. Like I don't even know this existed, but you can see how out of place. So if you sir, if you go into any ETF, so I can type spy, enter, and then click on holdings. This is really important to see here in the waiting, we can see uh, what's really, energy just is up. So energy was like 2% of the S&P when it bottomed in 2020, right? And if we think about how stupid we were at that point, like it was so underweighted. And if we go to Right now, it's information and consumer discretionary are almost 40%. This is after they were down, they're down 30%. So the, so the whole world was leaning towards tech and information technology. And if we go to QQQs, enter and go, and this is free. Like, so I just don't understand why people aren't using this, but um, you can see that information tech, which is Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, not even Tesla, uh, were 50% of the queues. So basically, if you're buying, like, you know, if you're buying the queues, which is fine, that was fine, right? And you throw in Tesla, which, which worked its way in, in NVIDIA. So you're 60, 50 to 60% of the portfolio. So everybody was leaning, whether they understood it or not, to fame 
in energy, which is like when we think about oil at 120 barrels a day, uh, $120 a barrel, what were we thinking? It was negative. So probably the trade of a lifetime for people that had an alert or just had any kind of instinct towards, you know, lean, you know, how markets work. Uh, there was a great trade there. I go back, I mean, I'm going to stop sharing right now. Uh, One funny story for you, Howard, on, on, on energy is that like back when I was at Cisco, hedge funds would call me to like understand about Smartsheet and Twilio and Zendesk. And no, now, they'd all given up. They were, everybody was in the pool. Okay. No, this is back like in 2015, oh. 16, right? And then now I have friends at funds who are like trying to get smart on energy, who are trying to hire good energy experts and stuff. And they just don't have that talent because everyone now understands software and fintech, but no one. Yeah, everybody was volume. just <laughs> buying it, right? And this is, you know, I, I even has a different scope because it's just, you know, I've been looking at the like the trending list for a year on stock Twitter, you know, the momentum list, and I'm seeing energy. So if I was yeah. just starting out on my own, it's and I'm not managing other people's money and I, I could blindly own these things, but I'm at the point where I don't own a lot of stocks, so I want to own things that I know. And um, I think that, that is the real problem is is that everybody was leaning one way. The real question is, does energy become 10% of the S&P? And if you, that's where you have to start thinking about it because you can't chase energy right now. Let's look at XL. Like I don't, like well, you can't chase it. I've been watching it all year. Uh, it's paid to kind of buy the dips and to chase it. But now, like you said, now everybody's, this momentum won't die quickly because we're policy is way behind. And, you know, kind of Russia's got the upper hand at this point on Europe. And, but you have to still be disciplined. For those that aren't disciplined, listen, there's tons of swing trades. There's tons of momentum trades in energy. And if you're scalping, you can get up to 20,000 shares in some of these big names and scalp it. But like for real money being put to work, what you have to think as a small investor is, is what you're hearing about people hiring energy out is going to persist for a year or two. And that's just, will energy become 10% of the S&P? And then the next question is, when is the QQQ, which I shared, they have zero allocation in the QQQs to energy. So if it's 0%, right, um, what happens? That's more long-term how I'm thinking about this. Short-term, I've been like what you said, like- So, sh yeah. Short-term, short it feels like there's a tradable bottom in a lot of these tech names. So even from like, I'll go to the ones that we all follow and, and, and ship knows a lot more. I talked to ship bat channel on WhatsApp about some of these companies and he explains them to me because he worked at Cisco and Amazon, but like data dog and snowflake traded down and Nvidia and reversed. Okay. So there was some real buying, not huge moves, but there was some reversals off these lows. And so there's an inkling of relief now. And, you know, if you want to trade long against those lows last week, great. I may do that myself. But these things are still so expensive. Like, so Shiv, how do you, how do you see it as someone who is also just a tech guy? That's exactly what I have done is last week traded off the software bottom. However, I would say like, if you look at FinTech, I think that's where multiples are way cheaper. So Marketo, for example, yeah. Got like two MQ. times revenue. You got Ivan with the nose the tickers here. Yeah, Mark. So like, I know it because they traded it. So <laughs> that one. Okay. Um, and then look at Bumble. That's shown up really well. That's a new name that's uh, kind huh. of back in a upward the trend. Dating, so, like the dating app Bumble. Yeah. Yeah. So stuff. And then AVAB, we were texting about like, I'm surprised defense hasn't gotten more. Love All the defense the talks are kind of setting up. Yeah, it's not the only one. But yeah, yeah in, 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 a, in, a, in kind of this type of market, the defense stocks do well. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that a few weeks ago. I forget the ETF for the defense stocks. Either. There's so many of them. This one is the DVN is uh, leveraged. But like yeah, that. ITA is huh. it's, it's so choppy. Certain, certain stocks look better. Um, the, the other thing that I think people aren't talking about, because Snap, Ivan, you, you alerted to it earlier with Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't even mention, Facebook mentioned Snapchat five times on the earlier call. Snapchat just fucking is in denial. And it is a good lesson 
for me in Snap in TikTok. Okay, so TikTok is a three hundred and sixty billion dollar company. Shiv, is, if, are young people there all TikTok? Yeah, it's pretty heavy TikTok in Asia, not in India. India TikTok is still banned. So Snap well, is, India is banned, so they have their own version. Correct, and they also have Snap in India. I, I think like similar to Stock Twits, that's kind of going to be their second biggest market and the second biggest focus and things like that. So, 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 so Snap is done, right? Like they really have done this a few times. They they've really they're in the I mean, Facebook at their size is going to change Instagram to compete with TikTok. I think what 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 is a great lesson here because I don't own Snap, but I own some Facebook and I own Netflix and, and, I, and I did own Spotify. So if we look at Netflix, that is who Snapchat for now, I'm sorry, TikTok. TikTok's free, right? And everybody under 30 or under 25 which is where Netflix has to go to get hook up their next customers is on TikTok. And, and they don't even care about if they're not, if their parent cuts them off Netflix, will they pay? I don't know. And, and the same thing with spot, like, so, and TikToks, all their users, I'm sorry, like they, they're create, like they don't have to pay for creators. Right. So, so I think, you know, TikTok is really at 360 billion kind of flipped the model. Netflix is now just 80 billion, I think. Um, and I say that with like, no one saw that coming. And I think the lesson here is much like it was with Facebook and, and Instagram, because I don't use TikTok, not only did I miss TikTok, but I think I missed the damage that the attention that TikTok was getting from like, young people spending all their time on TikTok. It's affecting Spotify and Netflix. Netflix and Spotify are fantastic businesses and we'll, I, I'm super bullish on both of them. Less so on Netflix at the moment, just because I see them spending money on ads. I can't believe Netflix has to buy ads on like the NBA finals, like to promote Stranger Things. That kind of blew my mind when, when, when I saw that. Now, again, I don't know about media and branding myself, but like it really was like, whoa, Netflix? What, aren't they supposed to be able to serve Stranger Things to all their users the day it launches? And, and here they are on, on, on the NBA Finals doing that. I also saw an Etsy ad, which kind of blew my mind. Uh, seeing the internet companies do TV ads kind of has blown my mind. So, uh, so we covered that, covered, um, let's talk about the markets in India. Well, Shiv, what are you saying? Like, what's the what, what, what's some American stocks that give us a feel for what's going on in India? And, and uh... so, just kind of zooming out, right? So, like, India kind of outperformed the U.S. off that COVID low, and like that that was heavy because as rates go low in the U.S., um, emerging market is a long duration risk on asset class, right? So you saw quite a bit of inflows into Indian markets, in, I guess, from overseas, as mm -hmm. well as emerging markets in general, followed by the whole geopolitical issues, right? And then in India itself, you, like, you have a pretty high savings rate. So you saw a big chunk of that be reallocated from gold and real estate into equities for the first time. So you saw brokerage accounts go from like 40 to 90 million from the COVID bottoms to now. So okay. like that's a really serious step change in like cultural behavior, right? And so that's kind of what's happened. And like the way India is different than the US is that India is primarily uh, financial services and the main indices followed by IT. And IT is actually not like software. It's like TCS, Infosys and Wipro who are outsourced consultants, right? Or more yeah. the system integrators and things like that. And so that's how this, like the whole market's made up. And, um, you know, the other big thing is that like, while in the US, like technology is a secular trend, right? Um, in India, everything is a secular trend. <laughs> Infrastructure is a secular trend. Cement is a secular trend. Retail and like urbanization, the secular trend. Financial services and large cap banks like HDFC is a secular trend, right? Travel, travel. is a secular, travel is a secular yeah. trend. Travel is a secular trend. So the whole market is a secular trend. So it's like, while they're all cyclicals, 
you do have secular trends within that. And then the most recent thing that's happened is like the, the whole venture ecosystem of US LPs investing in Sequoia and Lightspeed and all those kind of VC names in India who have now gone public. So now you have like Paytm and Zomato and Policy Bazaar and Nika who all you know went public at 20 plus times forward revenue for mm -hmm. B2C consumer businesses, right? Who are, I mean, not really like reinventing the world, right? Like they're cool offerings and have good product market fit and growing, but like serious CAC issues and serious cash, like very serious cash flow concerns, right? Who all went public at almost peak valuations. And you've seen those get cut and all from like 25X to like 5X. So oh, that's so they're, like they're a, hammered. So just like US tech, they've been hammered. Worse, like probably slightly worse, I would say. Just because the market's not fully developed. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what's happened in India. It's been ugly, but like still, if you compare the Indian indices to the, to the S&P, it's still held up better. And so that's quite a good thing, I think. Um, I mean, having said that, it, like you do see some kind of margin pressure because India does import 85% of oil. So you're going to see that roll through. The commodity stuff's going to roll through. So we'll see how the back half of this year goes. But um, that's and what's kind the, of the what's the smartest ticker to follow for like tracking India? Is it IFM still, or is it is that? I mean, obviously, I don't know if there's a new U.S. ETF. Um, the Nifty Fifty is the core index in India. So the I don't I don't I think they. Well, this is the one, I -N -D -Y. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah exactly. So you're saying India is outperforming, even considering the strong dollar uh, and inflation? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. So, like, if you look at, like, I think, I, I, um, so we have a show, about, but then, by the way, called Stockroom Sunday, which is Indian version of this show, by the way, Howard and Ivan. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so on that show, we did an analysis and, like, the drawdown from peak to trough in India has been less than the U.S. In the Even with the U.S. dollar being strong. Correct. Correct. And, and I mean, the size of that, so is there a Robin Hood of India? Like, I know there was lots of uh, things funded, but is there one that everybody's using? It's Zeroda and it's private and they spend nilch on marketing and it's an amazing business. It's private, um, no, very limited marketing spend. It's a kind of de facto tool. Uh, and what are you, you saying with stock, stock, what are you saying with stock to India? What's kind of been the mood? Well, we haven't launched yet, to be clear, Howard. We are so we're still kind of because we're still localizing and things like that. Um, but we're seeing an insane appetite for stock twits in India, right? So, like you see so many people who are deep into trading, and tr because the market's so cyclical, there's heavy momentum opportunities in sectors like sugar and cement and autos and things like that. So mm -hmm. the whole trading, um, I guess the momentum position trading strategy, swing trading strategy works really well. Mm -hmm. And like we're in the US, you see on YouTube, everyone researching Tesla and Square and Kathy Wood. In India, everyone's kind of searching, how do you trade? And like, what is technical analysis? What is candlesticks? And so that's where we're seeing an incredible opportunity. Um, as yeah, well I mean, as that's, why I, that's yeah. why I remain bullish. It's just so many, I mean, what do you think the, the so what is there, 15 million Robinhood users? Obviously, the wallet size will be bigger in the US. Yeah. It, like, what's the, what is the, how many people could, if Robinhood's at 15 million people, if there was an equivalent, like, what is the size of the monthly active user base of a young uh, mobile trading class in India? So it's like likely in the sub 10 million. So it's like five to 10 million is what zero. Oh, so it's still million. undeveloped. It's still, it's still no, but what could it be? Is there like 50 million? That's a good question, Howard. That's a TAM question that I think people have lots of arguments on how big the market is. So I don't, I don't want to get into that and stuff. But, but it's still very nascent. It's nascent. And there's 90 million DMAT accounts, which means brokerage accounts in India, which is not unique. So even if you cut that in half to 45, that's the 45, I mean, that's the number of like, uh, that's the number basically. Got it. Okay, it's guys. going back to the cues, Ivan. I think that going back to just, you know, kind of what I follow up. Um, Let, let's wrap it up, Howard, because I yeah, gotta go. You gotta hop. Yeah. I, think, I think we're learning a lesson here. And I've said this about a month ago, is that the, you know, when the XLE started outperforming the cues, I think that reign of QQQ, 
is over. Um, not that the not that XLE is the thing to own. I just think um, I'm just not sure. It was just too much Apple Google, and I think you know we the hammer has been laid. I don't know where this all goes down, but. Um, it's just a really interesting time. As for a bottom island, I mean, 20 only twenty percent of the Nasdaq one hundred companies were above their two were above their uh, two hundred day moving average, and that generally signals like some kind of significant rally starting. Very hard to pick stocks in that type of environment, so I, I generally hold indexes here, but like we were in we were in like a mess of a situation. How are you playing it Ivan, short term? Oh, I'm bullish. I think definitely there is uh, more room uh, in the indices than individual stocks. The one thing, yeah. the one main thing that changed last week is sentiment. All of a sudden we started to see a positive market reaction to bad earnings reports. And Netflix, um, I mean, NVIDIA was just one of the examples. Yeah. They missed estimates, they guided lower. You know, they went up 20% after that. You don't see that you know, when the sentiment is poor. So definitely sentiment had reached some extreme yeah. weakness and now it's just mean reverting. And then we're seeing yeah. something similar in the most shorted stocks in various industry like um, Dick Sporting Goods and- You just U like saying Dick. UPS, Dick like all of them are like 30% 30 of their float <laughs> is short. Like they had horrendous earnings. They would gap down 20, 30%, 40% and they would just close the gap or like yeah. gross. So this is yeah. a major change in sentiment, seeing that recovery. Yeah, uh, people willing to buy into that gap. No, that's why I'm glad you're, this is a good spot to end it. That if you are short, there was so much aggressive short selling by the same people that were Momo long by young people. I was talking to some Snap friends that trade and they were like, all my friends are like buying puts, like short term puts and killing it. And you know, it was just one data point on top of like the true sentiment analysis. And, and uh but, you know, I learned a lot today. Ivan, that's a good way to end it. Shiv, we'll have you back. Yeah, thank you, Shiv, for coming. All right. Well, thanks, guys. See you awesome guys. being on. See you guys. Okay.